Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a vintage perfume type of video. Ooh, and is this video is going to be all of the vintage perfumes that I have in my collection, plus some fragrances that are on the older side that have been discontinued. So I want to just lump them all in here together. Just bear with me. This should be kind of an interesting video. And I'm really interested to see you guys uh, comments down there in the comment section. Drop me some comments on some of the most vintage perfumes in your collection, how long you've had them, if you still wear them, etc. So let's get it started. So I looked up the definition, the actual definition of a vintage fragrance. And on Fragrantica, they say that, now this was back in 2012 when they said this, they said that any vintage perfume is considered vintage if it's formulated before 1980 okay or at least any perfume that has a vintage scent that smells like it was formulated before the 1980s so this could be um, sheep rough perfumes aldehydes powdery notes etc so i was like hmm that didn't help me any so what I did was I grabbed some of the older fragrances in my collection and decided to do a video on those. So, so first off, my number one spot, of course, is Poison Dior. And um, this one to me is a tuberose bomb. Let's just be for real. This one is so, so, so good. Um, this bottle I have here According to the batch code, this bottle I have here is around 2004, possibly older because, you know, batch codes repeat every 10 years. This one was released in 1985, so it is not that old, okay? This bottle is not that old. I got this from a seller on Macari.com, and the seller actually thinks that this one is around 2004 as well. I think they said 2000, but... According to the batch code, it would have been more like 2004. Either way, it has been taken care of so well. It still smells like the old original poison that I sprayed on myself as a child when I was like eight years old in a department store that started my whole fragrance craziness. So this one, it just still smells very authentic. The next one I have is Miss Cherie by Dior. This one I consider vintage as well, and it's discontinued. Um, original Poison or Poison by Dior. This one is not discontinued. You can still get this, but it's not this older formulation, right? So this one, um, Miss Dior Cherie, this one has been discontinued. My bottle here, according to the batch code, is from 2005, so this one is really, really old. This one was launched in 2005, so this is actually the original bottle. This still has that strawberry, popcorn, caramely kind of note in here. It's very playful. This one reminds me of... This, one, this, this fragrance reminds me of Soap and Glory, the original pink perfume. Um, so if you're looking for this one and can't find it or you don't want to pay the price tag for it, to me it smells just like the um, Soap and Glory Original Pink if you can find it. So that is Miss Dior Cherie. The next one I have is Clinique Simply. And this one I just showed in a previous video. This one was launched in 2003. I'm sorry, 2003-2004. I want to say it was discontinued somewhere around 2008, and this bottle happens to be from 2004. I got this one online as well from a site like eBay, but it's called Macari. And this one was obviously taken very well care of as well. It must have been stored properly because this smells identical, exactly like it did the very first time I bought it at the Clinique counter back in 2004. The next one I have is actually a men's cologne, but it is, it has been discontinued as well. This is Gucci Pour Homme 2 
This one is a black tea scent with a little bit of their cinnamon, but it kind of is in the background, so it's not really strong. This is just a light tea fragrance. Like I said, it's a black tea fragrance. Um, there have always been problems with longevity with this one, and this one was released in 2007. Uh, my batch code puts this one made around 2016, and that is about the time that I bought this for my husband. He wore it for a couple of years, and then he moved on to another fragrance. So you can see this one has got about three-fourths of it um, remaining. So that's what he used, and I grabbed the bottle, and I wear this one myself. It's definitely unisex. Fantastic. Very expensive to find anymore. A substitute for this is by Goldfield and Banks. It's called Blue Cypress. It smells almost identical to this, but it's a little pricey. It's a niche perfume. I found it on Lucky Scent, but it definitely smells just like this. The next one I have, this collection would not be complete without good old Obsession. This one was launched in 1985. This one propelled my uh, perfume addiction as well back when I was a child. Um, this bottle does not have the gold banding around it, so it is. Um, this is a newer bottle. If you have the gold banding around it, it is going to be an older bottle. This one, according to the batch code, is probably around 2013. It smells very similar to the original one that I had. It's just not as sweet. Um, but yeah, this one makes me smile. Obsession, Calvin Klein. The next one I have is by... Um, Givenchy, or Givenchy, however you want to say it. This is Pi, P-I. Um, this is actually marketed for men. This was actually launched in 1998, so this is one of the older ones I have in my collection. My batch code says this one was um, either from 2009 or 1999. The seller thinks it's from 1999, and if that's the case, this is mega old. I mean, this is like really, really old. Believe it or not, though, you guys, I can still get the top notes, the middle notes, and the base notes with this. It's orange blossom. It's um, it's like a benzoin balm is what I would call this. It's vanilla. Um, it's a tiny bit woody, but not much. It's more of a benzoin type fragrance. This one is not discontinued. You can still get it, but it's a new formulation, so it's not going to be quite as balmish and and have the longevity that this old one did but still still good nonetheless the next ones i have are definite oldies but goodies um shalimar this one was formulated technically before 1980 so this could be considered um vintage a vintage formulation i guess you could say my bottle is not vintage at all i purchased this bottle probably about four years ago I do not have the vintage bottle of this. My mom had one that was super, super old. It had that really old vintage bottle looking style. It was so pretty. I remember, I can just close my eyes and remember it sitting on these little glass shelves in her bedroom. And I would go in there and spray it and douse myself and choke everybody out in the house. But um, yeah, I still consider this one uh, definitely vintage. And this is the... Uh, this is the One Fluid Ounce, and this is the Eau de Parfum, so. The next one I have is Jill Sander, number four. This one was formulated back in the 1990s, so it, to me, is vintage. It's old. It's going back a minute. This one, this one's tuberose as well. This one is very, um, very strong. Only one spray, and I'm good for this one for the whole entire day. This is a small bottle. I want to say it is a one fluid ounce. This one is getting to be a little bit hard to find. So if you see this one and you want to grab it, go ahead if it's not super expensive. Um, because this one um, has been discontinued and it is hard to find. But it is, it's, it's very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. I really enjoy wearing this one, especially in the fall and winter. The next one I have is a fun one. Who remembers exclamation? This is a very older freight. This is totally 80s and 90s to me. Um, this is actually a, this is a somewhat, this is a somewhat newer bottle. 
when I spray this, it just, it kind of makes me laugh. I think I wore this like on a first date. I'm not really sure, but it just smells like a teenager. Like that song, it smells like teen spirit. <laughs> it's just fun, you know, it's just a fun fragrance. I could totally see someone wearing this one like um, year round. If you just want to spread something on and just kind of kick around the house or, you know, go to the grocery store, whatever. This one's totally fun. I would say it's a, it's a subdued floral. It's, fl it's flowery, but it's not like ultra flowery. I smell a little bit of musk in there. So again, exclamation. You can get this at your local uh, big box retailer. Still. The next one I have is by Davidoff, and this is Cool Water. Who doesn't remember Cool Water? This bottle is fairly new as well. This is just a um, EDT version. It is a one fluid ounce. Super light, you guys. Whoops. Did you see that? <laughs> wow. This is a super light version of this um, fragrance. This is one that you would like to wear to the beach, out to dinner while you're at the beach wear it at your house if you want to pretend you're at the beach totally aquatic cool water um still still easily obtainable uh i think most of your walgreens cvs walmart meyer all these stores target air in the u.s carries this and it is not very expensive but it just stood the test of time i really really like this one still and you can see i've used a good little bit of it you know so yeah Davidoff Cool Water. I have three more to go, so hang in there. The next one I have is Giorgio by Beverly Hills. You guys. This one is tuberosey as well. This one smells very vintage. I don't know when this one came out. I want to say probably in the 80s. This one just smells good. Like, I never wear this, but I'm never going to get rid of this bottle. I've had this bottle for a while, but you can still pick this up at most drugstores, at big box retailers. You know, they're not going to be, it's not going to be the same formulation that you had when it first came out. But it's so close, and if you're not going to be wearing it often, then I say go ahead and give it a shot. If you like vintage perfumes, you could go ahead and pick this up and just add it to your collection because it's not very expensive. And I don't know how much longer they're going to be making this one. So when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I remember wearing that Giorgio a long time ago. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and add it to my collection. Because like I said, who knows when this will be discontinued and nobody can get it anymore, right? The next one I have is Black Pearls by Elizabeth Taylor. This is a very classic vintage to me 80s smelling fragrance um but this one was actually launched in 1996 so it's not super duper old um top notes are peach gardenia bergamot with middle notes of water lily ro white rose and lotus and then the base is amber sandalwood and musk this is not a bad fragrance you guys it's more like i said of a vintage scent but I think once you get past the gardenia and the water lily, that's probably kind of making it smell vintage. I think once you get toward the middle and base notes, this one would be an absolute beautiful, beautiful fragrance to wear in the fall and winter. This reminds me of like this big, fluffy, black jacket that has pearls going down the front of it. It's real big and fluffy and cozy and warm. That's what this fragrance is. You can tell by the juice that it's, um, you can tell by the juice that it's really, really a rich fragrance. This one I've not had in my collection too terribly long. Um, so it is definitely not a vintage bottle, but to me it's definitely a vintage fragrance. The last one I have you guys is, um, this one is called Lulu by Cacharelle. This one to me definitely is vintage. This one was released in 1987, so let's go ahead and classify this one as vintage. This one has um, top notes of bergamot, black currant, green leaves, marigold, and mandarin, heart notes of jasmine, heliotrope, mimosa, tiara, or tiara, 
uh, ylang ylang with base notes of tonka bean, incense, iris, musk, vanilla, sandalwood. I mean, this thing is loaded with notes. This fragrance reminds me of me being a teenager. I think I actually wore this when I graduated high school. And that's been a while back. So uh, let's go ahead and give this one a quick spray. I like this one. I would actually wear this one today. This one is spicy. It's seductive. It's it's powerful. It's like I could I could smell this on like I could smell this on like the CEO of a company that's walking around in a suit. I mean, this is a take charge kind of perfume. It's seductive almost in a way. It's kind of naughty, kind of carnal a little bit. But yeah, um, the incense in that one and the orris, sandalwood, the musk, it's just a very, very rich type of perfume. The vanilla is very rich in here. It's very rich gourmand. Um, it's almost like the vanilla version of the chocolate river that ran through um, Willy Wonka's candy factory. So... <laughs> It is a absolute complete bomb. I totally would wear this today. Like I said, this may be my scent of the day tomorrow. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, this bottle is not vintage either. I, I picked this one up not too long ago from fragrancex.com. I love to order fragrances from there and this is not sponsored. Never is. I buy everything with my own coin. So yeah, this one. This one is the last but not least perfume. Um, back in the day when I was a teenager, I had the little sample bottle and it had the little, um, well, I'll put a picture up, up of it so you can see, but it had like the little pointed top with the little round base. And it was so, so pretty. This new bottle is also very weird to me. It's got the red top looking thing with the red, with the blue bottom, but you know what? It's what's on the inside that counts, just like us, right? Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I will continue to look through my collection. I may have missed one. If I did, I will do an updated version of this video before too much longer. And again, this one was super fun. If you enjoyed this video, drop me a comment down in the comment section below. Let's chat. Let me know what um, vintage fragrances you have or discontinued fragrances that you have. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button if you like this video. Share it with a friend. And, and until next time, guys, take care. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. And just like that, I am back. And I am bringing you three more fragrances that I found in my collection after I stopped recording that I need to include here. Um... I don't want to leave these three out because they are definitely vintage and they are three that are definitely worth mentioning. The first one I have here is Samsara and this one is by Guerlain and if you'll notice I have the whitish colored frosty looking bottle because I have the uh, reformulation. The original bottle is red. It's like a dark red color. Uh, this fragrance was released in 1989. Now, I don't have, the version I have is, is, like I said, the newer version. So, I don't have the original formulation. But the formulation I have is very nice. It's, it's a very, uh, very floral fragrance. It's very, this one is very powdery. Um, this one has a lot of violet, rose, iris, jasmine, orris, um, the base also has tonka bean, sandalwood, amber, vanilla, and musk. And then you have the top notes of lemon, peach, bergamot, and I think there's some ylang ylang at the top. Um, it is a very, very long-lasting fragrance with some pretty decent uh, projection. Um, this one to me is best worn in the fall and winter. And it definitely is... Um, it's pretty strong. The next one we have is Bijan or Bijan. This one is called Bijan Woman or Bijan. 
And this one actually, the, the thing about this one that makes this one unique is it is comprised of over 170 essential oils. Now, I'm not going to call all of them out, but um, the notes on this one say the top notes feature exotic fragrances from all over the world, including ylang, -ylang uh, Narcissus, Orange Blossom, Allspice, Bergamot, Neroli, uh, the heart is Persian jasmine. Um, let's see, there is some Belgium rose. There is li lily of the valley, carnation, honey, tuberose, orris root, violets. You have a woody amber base, so it's kind of a patchouli, cedar, heliotrope, vanilla blend. And to me, the honey and the amber are prominent throughout the whole spray so if you like that type of fragrance you might want to check this one out even though it is an older fragrance i i feel like it doesn't get a lot of attention and love in the fragrance community as a lot of these older fragrances don't i think some people think well i'm just going to smell old or i'm going to smell vintage but you know some of these fragrances are timeless so before you cross them off your list um, I would suggest going and maybe getting um, a sample of this at your local store if they have a sample out just spritz it and give it a sniff and see what you think of it the last one I have here is Moschino and it is um, Moschino for her it is re released in 1987 and it is a sophisticated oriental blend and it's um it's mainly top notes of freesia uh, marigold plum honeysuckle and then heart notes of carnation gardenia pepper nutmeg rose ylang ylang and then the bottom notes are vanilla amber musk patchouli sandalwood and it just says some air, just an, a creamy aromatic base this one is an absolute power house this one does smell extremely vintage to me. So if you are not a fan of the heavy, heavy vintage type of smell, um, you may want to stay away from this one. This is one that is hard to scrub off the skin. I sprayed this one not too long ago and it literally survived me scrubbing it with Dawn dish liquid, hot water. It's then survived a shower and it stayed on until the next day so <laughs> you know if that's your cup of tea then you will love this one otherwise uh, you may want to skip this one altogether. but yeah these are three that I did come up with after the video so I wanted to add them here at the end I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I will see you in my next video bye guys